Hello, so we're going to learn a little bit today about a place called Machu Picchu and um, we're also going to do proofreading for spelling at the same time. So I wanted to share with you because Machu Picchu is really cool. And a few years ago, I went, I was able to travel there. And one of the coolest things about Machu Picchu is that it's really isolated. It's kind of in, really hard to get to. So you have to go to the, what was the capital city of the Incan empire. So the Inca were a group of people that were, they lived in Peru and they conquered the indigenous people that lived in Peru and took over. And they were really good at building. They were good at studying astronomy. They were good at science and math. And so um, they left behind some amazing buildings and amazing structures in the country of Peru. And Machu Picchu, was built a long time ago, but it kind of fell apart and it got really overgrown by weeds and jungle plants. And also there were lots of earthquakes that caused a little bit of it to tumble apart. And so um, one of the coolest parts about it is that it's kind of isolated. In order to get there, you have to take a train and there's only one train that goes there. It's like the special Machu Picchu train. And everyone that's on the train is going to Machu Picchu because it lets you off at, at this little town that's at the base of Machu Picchu. And then you have to take a crazy bus ride with hairpin turns up a mountainside. It's absolutely terrifying. Uh, the whole time I was on the bus, I was like this, I can't look. <laughs> We're all gonna die, I can't look. So it's got a really hair raising bus ride to get to the top. And the bus ride takes about a half an hour because it's way up the side of a mountain. So I'm gonna show you some pictures if my computer will let me. I'm gonna share some pictures of Machu Picchu with you. And um, this is what it looked like this is drives me crazy that my computer does this. So let's see if I can. Uh, uh, just having such a great day. All right, you're gonna have to look over here to the side. Sorry, because my computer does this weird thing where it makes everything go off to the side. So um, this is what Machu Picchu looked like. Um, when it when Hiram Bingham, Hiram Bingham was a man that was an American and he had read all about Machu Picchu. And so he decided to go to Peru. He traveled down to Peru and he started looking around to see if he could find it. Um, he'd read that it existed and he knew that it, it, there were lots of ruins. And so he was able to actually find the site of Machu Picchu. And when he found it, a lot of the stones um, of the buildings had tumbled down and there were a lot of weeds. Um, so if you look at some of these pictures, you can tell that there were buildings here, but some of the stones have piled up like over here, especially. Um, Peru is kind of along a really strong fault line. And so there were quite a few earthquakes that probably caused a little bit of, of tumbling. Um, and so I think this is one of the cool pictures that shows, um, that kind of shows a little bit, this is what it looked like before. And then when they put a lot of the stones back and repaired it, um, this is what it looks like now. And when you go there now, you can see that, let's see if I can make this, it will not let me make it the whole screen. It drives me cray cray. So um, anyhow, this is what um, it looks like when you go now because they have built up a lot of the buildings and done a lot of repairs on it. And actually, if you go there, whoops, if you go there at a certain time of year, they will have festivals there 
and reenactments there that are really, really cool. Um, there are lots of tourists that are there. So you can see that they let lots of people up onto the mountain. Once you get off the bus, once you get off the bus, this is what it looks like from, um, the bus lets you off like right here. And then you climb down into this sort of little valley. And it looks kind of small here, but it's really quite large. And you can explore, you can wander around. If you buy and uh, spend more money and buy a bigger ticket, you can climb up here and hike up. There's more stuff up here at the top. Um, I'm too old and lazy, so I stayed here. <laughs> so um, it's a really interesting, interesting place to visit. And um, there's all this grass here. And one of the reasons why it hasn't gotten all overgrown with weeds again is because they have llamas that they set loose and the llamas nibble down on all of the grass and they're like little lawn mowers. And it's kind of cool. When we were there, we just sat down um, and llamas walked over to us and were kind of like looking at us and, and nibbling on the grass. One of the weird things about this is it's so high altitude. You are up really high and it's kind of a little bit hard to breathe. And also it kind of gives you a headache kind of makes your eyes feel like they're going to pop out of out of your head because it's it's a really high altitude site. So anyhow, this is um, Machu Picchu and I'm trying to when I filmed the video yesterday, I was able to find up oh, here's a llama. So <laughs> the llama is sitting there thinking, I can't wait to get over there and get at that grass. So um, it's really, you can see that it's really high altitude. And if you're standing near the edge, it's super scary. You get dizzy and you kind of get vertigo because it's really high up there. Um, let's see if I can find, yesterday I had a picture that showed what they think it looked like back when the Inca lived there. And I, I'm not seeing it. It probably fell down in the Google, Google shuffle. Um, there was a picture of a drawing of what they, oh, here we go, here it is, of what they think it originally looked like. So you can see over here that they had thatched roofs on the top of all these stone buildings. That's why they're shaped like that. They're pointed at the top. This was like, a gardening area with food where food was grown. These big, huge areas in here, some of them were for playing sports. Like they are as big as like two football fields long. And so they played sports over here. And then there were some temples and places where they worship. They also worship the sun. And there are several stones that line up with the equinox. Um, I'm trying to look and see if they have um, I, I'm not really seeing it, but um, it came up yesterday when I was looking. So um, anyway, it's a really awesome place. And if ever in your life you get a chance to travel, to South America and you get to go there to visit. Oh, this is kind of cool. So the Inca were so good at working with stone. None of these stones were mortared together or glued together. They're all just placed and they're placed so well that they've stood up over, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. And so you can kind of see what good stonemasons they were. And that's like a little niche, right? Where they would put a little statue in there. These are some of the houses, house structures. So none of those um, 
were glued or mortared together. And if you Google repairs, there are pictures of people fixing the stones because every now and again, they, they reset them. You can see how carefully the stones are placed. Like they're all different sizes and you can't slide a piece of paper between any of them. I mean, they're really, they were really good at good architects. And so these guys, maybe if one, if a stone falls out or comes loose, they repair it or they keep it clean, um, the stones clean. So this looks like someone is trying to do a repair on here because maybe there was some sort of um, earthquake or shuffling on that. But it's really interesting to look and see how good they were at building um, and how many um, how many structures they were able to build at such a high altitude. It's a pretty spectacular place. Um, there is a trail to get there that you can hike on instead of taking the bus. It's called the Inca Trail and it is the original way that people climbed up the side of the mountain. Um, recently there was a landslide and it closed off the Inca Trail so it was only possible to get there by bus. Um, also there was, this is a river that's at the bottom of uh, Machu Picchu and there was a lot of flooding a few years ago and it there were people that were trapped that couldn't get down because of the flooding. They were up on top of Machu Picchu. So anyhow, it's a really, really interesting place to go visit and we're going to do our assignment is all about Machu Picchu and this is kind of one of the basic pictures of it that shows this mountain peak over here and the, the double peak. Anyhow, one day you might be able to go visit. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Even though my eyes felt like they were gonna pop out of my head and I could barely breathe, it was worth every second because it was just so spectacular. The view when you were on the top of that mountain, you could see for miles all the way around. You could see everything. You could look down and see the little tiny river that looked like a little snake that is a big wide river. And But you're up so high that it's like, oh, look at the cute little river down there. Oh my gosh, that's a, the giant river. So um, we're gonna talk today about Let's get our camera going. And we're gonna talk a little bit about Hiram Bingham in proofreading for spelling. Okay. So we're gonna circle, this looks a little bit different because I had to print it out on my computer. So there aren't lines here. So I'm gonna write the words right next to the numbers. In 1906, Hiram Bingham had had enough of studying the history of the Incas in Peru in the library at Yale. Yale is a uni uh, university. He knew that they were important, important to the history of South America for several Lee reasons. He decided to take a working vacation to South America, not wanting to rely on his memory, it's memory. He took many notes and a camera with a K so he could remember, remember all the facts when he went to deliver, that's ER, a speech about his travels. So he had learned all about Machu Picchu and he thought to himself, I wanna go see it in person. In 1911, Bingham returned to Peru to lead another expedition and continue his quest for knowledge about the Incas. 
One can only imagine his surprise when he discovered, I, I take issue with the word discovered because people knew it was there. <laughs> he didn't just go, oh, look what I just discovered. I'm the only person that's ever seen it. There were people that knew, there were lots of people that knew it was there. It was just overgrown with vines and had a lot of damage to it. And so, you know, he, he was probably the first American, the first North American to see it, the first white man to see it, but he was not the person to discover it. There were people that lived in Peru that knew it was there you know, and people had even actually seen it and said, well, look at this, it's all overgrown and crumbly, <laughs> right? So he was the first explorer, like person from North America to see it. So discovered is probably not the best word in word choice. His surprise when he viewed Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Incas, the expedition turned out to be a huge personal victory, like Victoria for Bingham. The ancient stone city hidden by 500 years of jungle growth is considered by some to be the greatest surviving example of Incan architecture. Okay, so we need 14 words, let's count. One, two, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh-oh. 13, 14, I'm looking for three syllable words. Hiram Bingham had had enough of studying. Oh, Percy's crying. Important to the history of South America for several reasons. He decided vacation to South America. On his memory, he took many notes and a camera so he could remember all the facts when he went to deliver a speech about his travels. Let me count again. Maybe I counted wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, yeah, no, I didn't count wrong. The expedition, personal, the ancient stone city hidden by 500 years is considered by some to be the greatest surviving example of Incan architecture. Library, it's library. Look, they left the R out. Ah, okay, so that's gonna be number two and that makes all the rest of these move up in number. And then we have 14, perfect, okay. So number one is history and that is number six. H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. Number two is library. L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Number three is important. I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T. -T. Number four is several. S-E-V-E-R-A-L. Number five is vacation. In our family, we call it vacation. <laughs> V-A-C-A-T-I-O-N. We have a, um, a nephew that would call, say his V's like B's and he'd call it vacation. <laughs> so we call it vacation. Um, next is memory. Memory, M-E-M-O-R-Y. 
The next one is camera with a K, C-A-M-E-R-A. Uh, the next one is remember, R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R. -E -E next one is deliver, that's number five, D-E-L-I-V-E-R. Next one is another, it's number two, A-N-O-T-H-E-R. The next one is Sorry, this is kind of hard to see on my, see if I can pull out a little bit. There we go, okay. And then number 11 is continue. C-O-N-T-I-N-U-E. And then we have imagine. I-M-A-G-I-N-E. Victory, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. My grandpa's name was Victor, George Victor. So I always know how to spell victory. <laughs> um, and the last one is example. E-X-A-M-P-L-E. All right, so we got all of them. And we also learned a little bit about Machu Picchu and Hiram Bingham being bored, um, studying about something. So he actually went to go see what he was studying. All right. Hopefully this helped you to work on it together. And I'm, I hope this actually loads and that it can actually end up on YouTube. Thanks for joining me.